All right, we are live. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Wonderful. I kind of want to turn on the YouTube stream on YouTube and watch it while I do it. <laughs> I bet that would start a great feedback loop. I'm sure. Happy so I'm gonna Thursday. I'm gonna be filling in this whole background black. So. Get ready, it's gonna get really annoying. I'm gonna start filling in areas and then messing with them. It's, it's such a pain to do. I actually I don't know how they would do that in old comics. I guess they do it the same, right? They probably fill it with black ink and then they'd use like white gouache to do touch-ups. I would imagine so. Sounds like a real pain. Yeah, because you think you've got something and then you realize that your line weight is actually leaking into areas you don't want it to leak into, so you always need to touch up when you do this. Are you using the ramen brush again? Yeah. Outline an area where I can drop some black into it. week when you were using the um, the other brush we had some issues with it uh, bleeding over the lines bleeding over the lines yeah you remember you were going you were filling in areas and it was oh I bet it'll still do that because this is still not perfect edges mm. but well, well, I know yeah. what you mean it is cleaner though than the well, I guess it's cleaner than the messy brush. <laughs> yeah, that's not too bad. Plus, I think I fixed the setting because you showed me how to fix its threshold, that it's it's much closer to where it should be. Mm -hmm. And I'm erasing with the same brush. Let's see, it's just not the same. great thing about Procreate that you can designate the erasers. Yeah. Yeah, because doing this with brush and ink in real life is really, really hard. It's not a fun time. And it's like never quite fully white, even with the white gouache, even with a lot of layers of it. It's mm -hmm. different than the paper. using correction fluid instead? 
just like white out yeah oh yeah i definitely prefer white gouache to that really yeah do you like correction food i haven't tried it yet i bought some yesterday um because manga artists use it oh that's interesting maybe it's more of an american way to use white gouache yeah. jane whistler says hi robin hey jane apologies if i mispronounced your last name jane oh, i did pronounce it correctly great we also have Eric and Austin in the chat so far. Just as before, if you have any questions you'd like to ask Robin or uh, any other questions that I might be able to answer, feel free to pop them in the chat. I've sort of taken into doing things like that and filling in area areas little by little. That way, if there's a hole, you don't have to go around guessing all over the whole piece the whole time. That's a good idea. Find where it is. I used to do it more often, and then I got cocky, I guess, and then it bit me in the ass because I've had to chase holes around lately. Such a quick can too. I imagine that causes holes sometimes. Yeah, and I don't like to connect my lines. <laughs> like that's not my natural thing to do. I like to leave things open and um, have your mind fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't really work with this. We got Jacob in the YouTube chat saying, dang, your lines are super on point tonight. Thank you. I've been drawing a lot, a lot, a lot. I guess what's new, but I don't know what the difference is. I felt like I kind of, at the end of the x-ray specs one, I was like, oh yeah, this is how I make lines. Sometimes I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. I also like drew, huh? I said sometimes how you can, um, it's funny how you can sometimes forget what you do. Oh my gosh, I forget all the time. I, I also redrew this fly like a lot. <laughs> so I think my hand is really familiar with what it takes to make this fly. What were you going to say before I interrupted you? I had no idea. I don't know. I'm sure it wasn't important. Oh, yeah, see? It could be. Sometimes the edges do that. I'm going to try that first. I kind of bet it's around his butt, though. Mm, could be. Is a uh, creaky alley here? I, I forget what his real name is. And I don't know if he comes on as his real name or not. But he sent me this playlist and it changed my life. Not just yet. Or if he is, he hasn't made himself known.
I don't think I've... Have I made one that's got a black background on the live before? Since I've been here, not that I can remember. That's wild. I understand why, though, because it's a pain in the ass. I probably didn't want to put people through it, and then last week, I really put people through it on the X-ray specs one. That took a long time. Mm-hmm. So I was like, eh, it's a simpler image. Well, I can do a, a longer technique on it, I think. People stuck around last week. I hope they stick around for this. People really like watching ink. That's nice. It's like a real life, um, oddly satisfying video right before your eyes. I still feel like I'm better at it in real life though. Just how slick the iPad is makes it so hard. Even with the paper like? I wear through a paper like in like a day. It's basically pointless for me to keep buying these things. They're so expensive. They really are. If anyone has any good recommendations for paper like dupes, drop them in the chat. Don't drop in the chat those freaking pen nibs unless you've actually used them. Because <laughs> yeah, I've had ha- so many people be like, have you tried the nib? Try the nib. And I'm like, have you tried it? And they're like, nah. Yeah, the they one have person- to be properly vetted. Yeah, the, the one person I talked to that tried it was like, oh, if you think paper like wears out fast, try the nib because it'll be gone in a couple of minutes. I'm worried about the nib too because I could see it like producing friction. But what I like about paper like is it's got that like gritty friction. It's not just like slow and sticky. Mm. And I feel like the nib is going to be that. It's just going to be like, I don't know, weird. the double tap why is that the double tap yeah to undo <sighs> because it doesn't respond half the time for me uh, i just got so before? sick of it i'll i'll do it sometimes less when i'm drawing um because i've just gotten into the habit of it just not working sure. and more when i'm like if i've selected something and i'm trying to transform it and just like won't work half the time when I'm doing that. I wish it worked. It would be interesting to see how doing it without the case affects things tonight. Yeah, because I feel like it's got to be the heat of the screen because now you've witnessed it'll be fine at first and then as the night goes. Right. It gets, like, worse and worse. We need to make friends with a Apple genius. I kind of did. I gotta find out who they are, who this masked genius is. I, I went to the Apple store that one time, and when I was there getting help, someone recognized me which was so funny and weird especially because i haven't been outside in a year they're like oh you're you're that artist i was like wow okay um but they were wearing a mask you know (laughs) so i was like thanks uh yeah i wish i knew who that person was because i would use them (laughs) you need to do a misconnection yeah (laughs) seriously um, Soren is asking how old your iPad is. Oh!
What am I doing? I think I'm going to do these as erase marks, and I think I'm going to do that stem as an erase mark. So I'm not going to worry about those. Now there's an endless loop. Uh-oh. Fixed. Apologies for that, everyone. got a question from Golden Age asking, has Robin, Robin ever considered taking a break from drawing in the day? In the day? I'm sure you've considered it. <laughs> oh, I do it. I, I have to be much nicer to my wrist than I was last October, or I'll be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, everyone take care of your wrists. Yeah, I think iPad drawing really makes it much worse than it would be if it was just traditional drawing all day. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because, like, the limited space, like, you kind of mostly have to use your wrist. And I think also having it be a hard surface against a hard surface or something. I'm not mm. really sure. Oh, I guess our audio cut out because Soren's asking if you could repeat what, how old your iPad is. Just a little over a year, maybe. Or maybe just a year. Around that. Sorry about the tech issues. I think I can do it. I can do it. All right. Cool. And there's some Exotica song that has a fly buzzing around, and I can't remember what it is. I kept looking around. Hmm. There's a song called um, Spanish Fly, but that didn't have any fly in it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> this is a different Golden kind of fly. Knows. Golden Age listens to a lot of Exotica stuff, too. So we got... Chat in the YouTube chat saying you, that, that you need a second iPad in the fridge so that you can hot swap them in the middle of the stream. <laughs> Damn, true. That's a good idea. <laughs> we got other people saying that they yeah. feel like they grip their Apple Pencil harder. Oh, totally. Oh, and I, I couldn't get the grip on there from my last Apple Pencil because they replaced the old one. But yeah, I can't get it to slide back on. Hmm. I had a coworker who had um, arthritis or something and she had this huge pencil grip. Let me oh. see if I can find that for you. I would love that.
wonder if that'll do it. Let me see. No, that doesn't have the same effect. Hmm, how to do this? Dizzy lines against black background. That's hard. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I just do it like that. I might do it. Oh yeah, I think that looks much more like dizzy lines. Totally. I'm gonna go roller skating after this, I'm very excited. Nice! Yeah. Yeah, we realized that we could do um, a group listen on Spotify and not have to, like, invest in a expensive speaker and then go over to the park and then both of us are gonna wear headphones and just do group listen. So we're skating oh, so the same cool. music. Yeah, I hope it works out. I feel like it should. I was thinking about getting one of those HomePod things, but I realized that I only ever stay in one room, so there's really no need for it. <laughs> Wait, what's a HomePod? It's like a smart speaker, like the Alexa thingy. Ooh, I've got one of those, but it's the, the Google one. Oh. It came free with um, getting the Spotify family account. What? Which stopped really quickly, so I think it... It didn't end up being a money maker for them, which I could imagine. It would be probably pretty expensive. Golden Age is doing reconnaissance for the fly song. Oh, hell yeah. It might be a weird one that I've got on a record and nowhere else. I don't know. So he says, is it Martin Denny's Tsetse Fly? <gasps> it might be. <laughs> oh, it might be. Cool. I wish I had a way to change the music and then change it back. I'll, I'll check after, though. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, let's see. I've got a star here. Man, the best thing about this freaking autocorrect tool is making stars. Oh, yeah. You guys have a lot of tiki bars in Arizona, don't you? Um, they're kind of a dying breed. Mm. We've got Bikini Lounge, which is like the dive bar that all the artsy kids go to, or at least it was until it got replaced by this kind of bougie one that I don't like too much. Um, my favorite bar in Phoenix is called Cruise and Seventh. It's where all the gay people go who aren't like 20-somethings. Oh. Wait, what do you mean? Like they're older? Yeah, they're like older and kind of worn in. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I love places like that. So if you're in the Phoenix metro area, check out Cruise and Seventh. Deciding if I want to turn up that uh, streamline or try to just do quick strokes on this. I'll try quick. Oh, it's driving me crazy that it's actual white. Let me move this up.
Did anyone catch that pun? That I'm using vintage flyleaf for this? <laughs> That's probably my favorite thing about this whole piece. That's a really good joke. Coming in a little late, but people are appreciating your joke. <laughs> good, good. It's actually really nice because usually it takes me a long time to figure out which paper I'm going to use. And I opened up the paper textures and I was like, oh, <laughs> that's an easy decision. Got it. So obvious. I'm gonna make a poll for those of you who are, are joining us on Crowdcast. We're gonna do a poll on what your favorite type of alcoholic beverage is. Man, that's wild. I was hoping you would say that. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about a mojito lately. I wanna go get a proper mojito. Mm -hmm. Okay. So our Crowdcast folks, you can see the poll and it's active right now, but for the YouTube people, let us know. What's your favorite type of alcoholic beverage? We've got beer, wine, straight liquor, mixed liquor. If you don't drink, you can say that too. You don't have sake on there? I consider that a wine. Oh yeah, that's true, I guess. I just don't care for wine, but I sure love sake. I'm a big fan of rosés, but pretty much nothing else. <laughs> Okay, so David in the YouTube chat said, because people are talking about how much they love Topo Chico, which hard same. Oh, yeah. um, but David says that they make cold brew with Topo Chico. What? Yeah, I dropped wild. a recipe for that, David. <laughs> yeah, that's that's wild. I wonder if it's sweetened or not. I've never had a sparkling coffee not sweetened that I've ever liked. 
It seems like it should work, but something about it being sparkling, I can't, I can't do it black. I've never tried it, but we've got this, um, seltzer machine that Noah built, and he keeps trying to get me to sparkle my coffee, and I refuse, (laughs) I refuse to let him do it. Yeah, don't do it. (laughs) I'm with you on this one. I've, I've got a seltzer machine at home, and I brought home a big bottle of sake, and I made it sparkling sake. See, now that sounds reasonable. It wasn't very good, but sparkling sake is generally good. I think you have to add sweetness to it, because carbonation affects the way that your tongue uh, senses sweetness, and it, it makes it much less sweet, which is why, like, flat soda is so awfully, disgustingly sweet. Mmm. But so I think what's happening is when you get something that's like subtly sweet, like coffee or sake, you carbonate it and it's just like so bitter and disgusting. Right. David said that they put in brown sugar. I'm starting to come oh, around on this idea. Okay. Yeah, I'm done with that. I'm a black coffee person myself, but I also really love dessert coffees. It's like a whole different drink. We used to do one at the coffee shop that me and Jacob worked at that was a tonic mixed with espresso and simple syrup and a lemon. Oh no, no, an orange. It's like Mm. muddle an orange into it. And it was insane. It was so good. I think I've had something similar to that. Mm-hmm. Laura in the YouTube chat brought up something called a Manhattan Special Coffee Soda, which is apparently a tradition in New York. Oh, cool. I'm gonna have to write that down. I had something when we went to Cancun that was like a, an alcoholic coffee thing. I can't remember what it was called, but it was just like this Spanish liqueur and then coffee, or not coffee, but espresso over ice and shaken. It was so good. I had it like every morning. But no one one has that liquor here anymore. A friend of mine clued me into, it's probably called something else, but because it's Arizona, we call it an Arizona sunrise and it's espresso with orange juice. Ooh, I could get down with that. Yeah, you wouldn't think that it would taste good, but it's fantastic. Gosh, I've made everyone suffer through lettering twice now in a row. So sorry. Let's check on the polls. We got three votes for cocktails and one vote for beer as being their favorite. I wish beer could be my favorite. We had a lot of teetotalers in the chat. What's that? Oh, it means somebody who doesn't drink. Cool. That's wild, I didn't know what that meant. In all the years I was straight edge, I never was called a teetotaler. It's not a very common word. At least, you know, for the last 80 years. (laughs) Where does it come from? Uh, I don't know, let me look it up. Thank you. 
you have birds over there? Uh, not in the house. Oh, okay. <laughs> we have trees just outside the window, though, so they might be a little noisy. So apparently there's some contention as to where it comes from. Um, the most humorous one, which I am going to uh, officially designate as the official <laughs> origin, is that the T in teetotaler is like the letter T, and the T in teetotaler that is the letter T stands for the word total. <laughs> what the hell? That's cool. So it's total totaler. <laughs> and that's it. I'm not going to look any further into it. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Jane says totally drinking only tea. Yeah, so if you're a tea totaler, you only drink tea. I believe that. That works for me. That's the official definition now. Man, I hate tea. It with a passion. All tea? Yeah. I mean, if there's an option, I'm probably gonna do something else. Very interesting. Every now and then, though. Like, when what we go you... to dim sum, we get tea, and it works for that occasion. Oh, we got a question for you. So Soren asks, I see that you are using the eraser and also the pen with a white color. Why don't you just put the lettering on a different layer and just draw in white? I am. That's what I'm doing. Oh, look at that. I gotta erase the edges and then I'm gonna take this white and subtract it from the black because I don't want to fake... I don't know. I don't... I don't like having multiple layers when I don't have to. And mm -hmm. like, if this were printed, I, you know, all, all the black ink would be just the black ink layer. And I want to keep it that way. I don't want to have white floating above it. So subtract it from the black, are you going to use a layer mask? I was just going to select it. I guess gotcha. I could do that. I don't know how to do that. It's probably more accurate though. You would just, um, well to do, hmm. I don't like, think can I take any... what I've got and make it into a layer mask? You could select it and then create a layer mask on the black and then apply a fill to your selection. Oh, that's so like that basically makes... the same though as just yeah. selecting the white and subtracting it from the black though, right? It's just non-destructive. I like to be destructive. <laughs> I, I really do. I think it's more authentic to what the process would be. And like when I do stuff like throw off all the colors at the end, like throw them out of register and stuff, having mm -hmm. it be destructive helps. Or like if I'm destructive on the blue and the red and the black, then they're all working together in a way where they wouldn't with masks. Right. Anymore. Jacob asked, does chai count? No. Do you not like chai? I, I like chai. <laughs> we just got a bunch of chai here, actually. Yesenia brought home some, some of that Oregon chai, which everyone hates. I love it because it was my first introduction to chai. And so it just feels like special and nostalgic for me. And I, I drink it all. The Oregon chai? Mm-mm. Oh. I, I bet if you taste it, you'd be like, oh yeah, this crap. It's <laughs> like, if you go to like any coffee shop, that's probably what they're using. Oh, is it like the liquid stuff? Yeah, it's like a liquid concentrate. And then gotcha. you just like do it half and half with milk or your milk alternative. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I have had that. <laughs> But then I went and I got Trader Joe's chai because I drank all of her organ chai. 
But then I drank all the Trader Joe's chai. <laughs> so I, I think we can say that you like tea then. <laughs> I just like fancy drinks. But I don't, I don't really like green tea. But like I said, it, it has its place. There's a lot of people who don't like green tea. Yeah, if I'm having sushi or dim sum or something, I could have it on the side, but I'd rather have sake. I really like green tea. I, I especially like the kind that kind of tastes like seaweed. Oh, I could be done with that. I like um, Genmai Cha, because it tastes like Cheerios. It's really good. <laughs> Oh, we got some other Oregon Chai lovers in the chat. <laughs> I'm glad. People really hate it in the coffee industry. They're like, oh no, we need to get bok tea chai. That's the good stuff. It's like, no, I want it to Ooh. taste like candy. Jacob brings up lavender chai, which I could totally get behind. I don't like lavender flavored things. That is a shame. <laughs> I think it's hype, and I think in 10 years, everyone's going to be like, ugh, do you remember when we used to stick lavender in everything? I, I will consume any type of flower. That's fair. Okay, all right. That was pretty painless. Yeah, how long was that? 20 minutes? Felt wow. like forever. I have my computer up on full screen, so I have no idea what time it is. Okay. Yeah, I can't look at the time on any of my devices either. What time is it in your part of the world, chat? I had to turn to white again. No. Okay. We got a lot of people on the East Coast. Oh, nice. So we got a question, aside from looking cool, does that glove prevent the screen from reacting to your hand? It seems like it does. That's my hope with it. Hey, this little fricker's working out, ain't he? It's looking pretty good. Golden Age um, said that it was 40 minutes of inking. What? That's not true. It was more than that, if anything, because he started early. Oh, I was just talking about the lettering. Oh. Still don't know. You know, time is relative. That's true. Oops. I think I liked the first one better, and I undid it like a fool. We got a suggestion in the chat. If you turn off finger marks and gesture controls, it really helps a ton with accidental touches of the hand. Did it. It's already gone. Sorry. That's what people say every, every week. <laughs> Well, you know, it might be helpful to other people. <laughs> That's true. It's not, not all to me, about though. you. <laughs> right now, it feels like it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it, though. But yeah, I tried that. Mm. 
Oh, look at your big dopey eyes. You love alcohol. That's cute. <laughs> just realized where we can send people today since we're not doing anything um, special we can point them to the secret society oh yeah true because I was just thinking that I hadn't seen your behind the scenes just yet oh yeah let me show that It's cute. I love all of these little Disney war mascots. Oh my gosh, those are so cute. Right? I mean, it sucks that they were made for war, but they're really, really well designed. There's my sketch before I started all this. <laughs> I wanted to look at that other thing I posted because I wanted to I wanted to stick a pattern on his shirt and I have no idea what I'm going to do for the pattern but I remember there being a good pattern in this pop surf culture book on someone's shorts maybe I can do something like it where are you Ah. I don't know. I don't know if I can just wing a pattern like that. That's a good one, though. Right? I want those shorts. I didn't even notice those two dancing. Good job. <laughs> uh, we got a question if, you, if you're ready for one. I'm ready. Soren asks, Robin, do you plan your colors out, or do you have a general idea about what you want? I don't know anything. I'm just guessing. Makes these life draws scary. <laughs> sometimes, job, sometimes I have a general idea. On that x-ray specs one, I knew I wanted purple and pink for those people in the background. I just didn't know how she was going to mess or mesh with that. Mm -hmm. And I do not do a good job of that because you saw me do that mummy mask. <laughs> that sucked. That doesn't happen to me often, but yeah, every now and then it's like I've literally spent five hours coloring and recoloring something and just never being happy with it. See, that's why I just stick to the primaries. You can't go wrong with primary colors. Oh, totally. And I think that with Color Lab, that's really like your safest bet is to stay really close to the primaries or just mm -hmm. like the vivid secondaries. I'm not digging this music. Why did I stick this on my playlist? Hold on, hold on. Oh, Jackie Gleason. Yeah, so I'll probably be open for suggestions on color tonight. I know I do want some really vivid ones, uh, especially up in here. 
Damn, is that it? Are we done lining this thing? Oh, wait. Oh, the straw. The straw. Drop your color suggestions in the chat, everyone. I feel like flies, if they're not, like, gray, are usually, like, blue. Or green. Or green, that works too. I mean, like, in, like, cartoons and stuff, they're usually blue. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go with gray, mm -hmm. but I don't know for certain. Alright, let's see. We got a, su a suggestion to incorporate some sort of retro orange or red color. Done. Doing it. That's a good suggestion. Alright, I'm gonna select this lettering and cut it out of here. Oh, there you are. Uh, and I'm. I hope it's not annoying if I do the same approach I keep doing, where I just like map out my colors and then I turn them into color lab stuff. I think it's super helpful because you do it all the time and I still can't remember when I try and do it. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's see, what gray was I looking at? I was thinking of like a... Oh. Nice. I think this though. So it's gonna be a yellow two, a blue three, and a red two. Cool. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna end up being too dark. That's my only concern with all of this gray. Um, oh, maybe I can just select. Um, well, better than nothing. I still think it's faster. So Golden Age says, green for the bees like that old cobweb hotel cartoon. Not sure if Robin will get that or not. I love that cartoon. There you go, they got it. <laughs> Is that in color? I don't know if I've ever seen it in color. I think the copy I've got is in black and white. Yeah, gray is a gamble. I'm not sure on this. So we got a question from Kiki. Does your current coloring brush have a slight streamline on it? If so, why would that be? I think I might have a slight streamline today. I've got a 27% streamline today. It's something I always change my mind back and forth on, if I like it or not. I've been using smoothing on Photoshop lately, which is essentially the, the same thing as Streamline, and it helps a lot, but it was just like you said before that it takes some of the character out of it. 
Yeah, I really, really can. Darker gray legs? Yeah. I'm glad we went with doing it this way, because now I have thoughts about making him a green fly. Well, with this technique, it doesn't really matter what the color you're laying down is, right? No, not at all. I've just got the area filled. I can fix whatever color I want there. Okay, so we've got from Soren, red cherry, green lime, uh, pink, red punch, yellow straw. Ooh, that could be good. I'm thinking the cup is going to be like a light blue. Mm -hmm. What color was the punch, they say? Uh, pink, red. Yeah, so like a more reddish pink or more pinky red? I like the way that the bees, um, oh no, I went away from it, but they have that like peach face right there. It's so funny. I think I'm mm -hmm. going to do that. You're going to like this question. Um, Golden Age asks, so for the live streams, does Robin plan these out days beforehand or the morning of? It depends. <laughs> and it depends on which part of it. I usually don't plan my colors unless I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, this is going to be a problem. No, it's an orange here. Really? I like the other one. Really? Um, I don't know. I'm usually in the minority on these things. I feel like it's too cool against how cool his uh, fur is. We'll see, though. It doesn't really matter at this point. It's like a difference between red brushes. So we could fill it in with half tones and then change our mind and just re half tone it. It definitely doesn't look bad. Oh yeah, but this one I planned out last night. Pretty late, actually. Ah, you might be right. All right, Bailey. Whatever. Okay, we'll do it. Which means, should the violets be that color? Maybe a touch darker. I'm gonna stick with this for now, and we'll deal with that when we're doing the half tones. Yeah. It's far enough away from his face that it doesn't really matter. I'm I guess it would depend that. on what kind of fly this is. Is it a this is a one-time fun night on the town, or is this like <laughs> a three-day bender? <laughs> Good point. Yeah, usually I do like a like purplish. Right, just to see. What you drinking? Hope you brought enough for the whole class. <laughs> Pinky red, Soren is is clarifying. It's kind of nice purple there. Pinky red what? For the punch. That would be that. Unless that's too vivid. That may be too vivid. Let's give it a shot.
think that's a good choice. I have to decide on this gray, if it's happening or not. Well, let me fill in that cherry, and then I'll decide. Cherries are red red. Wait, mm -hmm. no, they're kind of darker. They're kind of uh, purpley red. I might just stick with red red. I don't know. Yeah, I'll stick with red red. I feel like that's what they would do in a comic book. And it will brighten up. All these colors are not very bright. I guess the inside would be the same color too, right? Pretty much the same color on the inside as the outside. Yeah. Fly color. Let's see about this. That could be good fly color. Maybe too dark. Too dark. I don't mind the gray now that everything everything else has color. Yeah, I can't decide. Gray might be it. In that case, I will give him a green shirt. Are you planning on coloring the eyes in at all? Or are you going to keep them uh, black and white? I think I'll keep them black and white. We got somebody suggesting um, green for the eyes. That's why I asked. Yeah, I know flies do have colored in eyes, but... They also have much more than just two. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Where do they? Is it just that they're like... I think they do, but they're all lumped together in the way that two eyes kind of look. It's mm -hmm. it's kind of close-ish, because, yeah, I had that same thought, where I was like, oh, they have, like, a ton of eyes, right? But um, 
They are still in like two circles. If I start thinking about Fly Anatomy too long, I'm gonna start thinking <laughs> of the Jeff Goldblum movie. <laughs> oh yeah, I was thinking about that movie. I want to watch that. Bear says they're multifaceted, but are do they just have two, or are they multi as in more than one eye? Who's to say? Many eyes, Bill says. Where are the where are the entomologists in the chat? <laughs> Laura says many eyes on one eye, if that makes sense. See, I that's think so. Close Maybe this is the green I want for a shirt instead. I don't know. That's, That's a good green. Right? That's right. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Is it too light? Might be too light. Well, you wanted to do something like the shorts pattern right maybe you could yeah. incorporate the two i just wanted its base to be a certain color i was thinking green let's see what this look like look at it again. <laughs> I already forgot. Oh, it's like blobbies and uh, doodads. <laughs> Do you ever use the, um, not picture in picture, but like the side by side? Yeah, but then we can't show off the secret society. That's true. <laughs> you guys got to pay for that. Sorry, folks. Turned out pretty tedious, actually. I had my doubts. You were worried, and for what? That looks perfect. Thank you. Okay, Bill's come in with something in quotations, so I feel like this is pretty definitive. Most insects have a pair of compound eyes, which are characterized by a variable number, a few to thousands, of small individual eyes called omatidia. Ah. Realize, realize, real wow. eyes. Give me a new appreciation for, for bugs. Okay, we got a suggestion. Maybe make the slice red and the skin green. I know it's not accurate to real fruit, but it would work with the cherry, I think. 
Slice red and the skin green? It's a weird idea, but it could work. I don't know about that. I wouldn't do the green up there anyways. I think we'll have plenty, plenty of green going on. Yeah. Um, the witch green. I think I'll stick with that same green. Man, I've always wanted to learn how to tie a cherry stem with my tongue. And I've never been able to do it. Well, how often do you practice? That's the real question. I practiced a lot for a while, and I cannot do it. It always felt so close, but I could never seal the deal. Yeah, we all got skills in different areas. I wonder if anyone in the chat can do it. I bet someone out there has figured it out. I can do it. You can do it? <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. I can't so remember if I'd like practiced it or if I could just do it. I taught myself how to do that like taco thing with your tongue. Oh yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Bear said the bar trick version is to hide a previously tied cherry stem in your mouth, so you just cheat. <laughs> Jane says that she can wiggle her ears. Whoa, cool. That's really awesome. Hmm, what color on these guys? Maybe a more vivid blue? Might be in order. Oh yeah, and this damn glass and straw. I do like the idea of the straw being yellow. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that brightens up the whole deal. I think with the blue on the glass, that'll do it too. wings are not the right color for me, but I think I'll deal with that later. Jane is asking what the fly is drinking. Seems to be a rum punch of some sort. I was gonna do like a straight up tiki drink, but I didn't want to do a tiki glass because then you couldn't see into the glass and see the liquid. Unless it was one of those um, long glass bamboo shaped cups. I guess mm. it could be one of those. But, I mean, it still could be, really. So I'm just gonna stick that same blue here. where this makes more sense than it looks like it does. Now the letters, gosh, I don't know. I do want to do the top one a different color than the bottom one. Not sure what yet. 
Well, somebody Lost. suggested orange, and I think if you were gonna put it anywhere, that might be a good place to put it as in the letters. Yeah. I don't know how true I'm gonna stay to these colors. I'm not doubt. We'll see what happens. I could do orange with the green. Okay, we've got a joke. Um, what is the difference between a butterfly and a regular fly? <laughs> what? One emerges from a pupa, and the other emerges from a poopa. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Who was that? That was Soren. That was great. Thank you, Soren. Is that the orange they were talking about, or were they talking about that red orange? They just said vintage orange, or retro orange. I'm not I'm not sure what that translates to an actual color. Because that one kind of works, too. Kind of like the way. lighter one. Yeah. That looks great. All right. Let's do it's, this stupid thing. That kind of sounded sarcastic, but I meant it. <laughs> I don't need to clear that from here, actually. Hmm. Okay. We've got confirmation from Jane that she also thinks it looks great. Thank you, Jane. So I'm gonna do my... Oh, actually, I can just do my yellow layer on that. Bring this down here. Get rid of that. Okay. I wonder what size. I want big old dots tonight. Let's see how big these are here, though. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, let's do big dots tonight. I end up kicking myself later. I'm feeling good about it right now. No, this is a good choice. I'm liking it so far. Poopa, that's so funny. <laughs> All right. We're off to a good start. Now this darker gray. How the hell did I make that? I'm guessing David... it'd be the same formula. I've just worked backwards, but it would probably be blue four. Hmm. David says, it does look awesome. I really enjoy watching Robin draw. Thank you, David. We got another joke. Um, Bear said, I bought a wig for a dollar today. It was a small price to pay. What? Do you I get bought it? a wig for a dollar today. It was a small price. No, I don't get it. To pay, like. Oh, um, to pay! Oh, okay. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. That was a good one. I had to be really careful to word that properly. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, 
I bought some shoes from a drug dealer. I don't know what he laced them with, but I've been tripping all day. <laughs> but don't shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Thanks. Okay, here's here's a moment of truth on this stupid face. What are we thinking? Is it gonna be a red two? Red two's good. Yeah, we don't wanna go any more red than that, I think. I think you were right on with that. I have my moments. <laughs> now these eyelids. What did I do for that? That's like there, purple? Hmm. I don't know if this is the purple I selected, but let's see how this works. I think it's a little darker. Yeah. I don't know if I want it to be anymore, though. Fair enough. Want... Let's see. Let's see. Maybe my instincts were right originally. I'm not sure. No, it is better more vivid, huh? Hmm. Kiki says, textures are just amazing, especially retro supply textures. I completely agree, Kiki. Yeah, for real. This, what was the formula for this guy here? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, oh yeah, yellow two and red four, is that a four? Is that what that's called? So for anyone who might be wondering, um, Robin is using a color palette version of the color chart that comes with Color Lab, um, and you don't need to question what color is which because you can reference the, the color chart that comes with your purchase. Yeah, you don't need to guess like I do. It's just They're how just I making do it. it difficult. <laughs> Um, if you want the color palettes that Robin is using, you can access them through the Secret Society. It was a freebie two weeks ago? I think you're right. Got a question. Has Robin gotten any new records recently? I have not. Was that from Golden Age? Yeah. He's always asking me. He DMs me that. <laughs> Golden Age, I have not. I remember what I said last time about how I was going to start spending on records. Man, I loaded up my cart on Discogs and then I was like, no, no, I've got I've to hold off. And then sure enough, I had emergency root canal on Monday and now. I need to find $1,800, so I'm glad I didn't buy those records. Yikes. Yeah. Take That's care of your teeth, nice. kids. That's what I keep telling our kid, because he tries to fake it on brushing. I'm like, dude, 
You're only fooling yourself. You it's only get really the one suck. set. Yeah. I'm tired. I'm happy with this shirt. I want that shirt. What else? Oh, I've got that blue. Oh, I was supposed to mention that we're going to be celebrating Color Lab's anniversary. It's next week, right? Yeah, I believe so. Next week. Yeah, we've got some really fun things planned for you all. Um, we're going to be doing um, webinars and um, some fun activities. And I don't want to give away too much. So you'll just have to be patient and wait a whole three days. But um, it's going to be fun. Yeah, I think people are going to be sending in questions and then I get to answer them on a webinar. Yeah. Oh, I forgot that part. rush you at all but just so you know we're at an hour and a half oh that's not bad yeah we're making really good time that orange I like that orange okay. let's let's try the darker one just in case just so we can see it yeah I think the first we got a lot of people in the chat who love the shirt I want the shirt now maybe I can print some I think that's it, and then I just gotta rough this thing up. Well, yeah. I wanna color these things too. I'm just gonna freehand that though. Thank you. 
Oh, what the heck? Oh, oh, oh. Home brush. I think I was using the ramen brush from Steal This Brush Pack for some reason. Decide if there's anything else I need to do to this. Besides just rough it up, which I'll do for sure. Oh, I had a thought about the ice cubes. If they should be a light pink, since they're floating in a pink drink. That's it. I'll destroy this thing now. All right. I'll take your advice and make a copy of it, though. If you have the space for it, I think it just makes sense. Yeah. Let's get rid of all these pesky layers. That's also um, a good thing if you. If your file size is really big and you run out of layers, mm -hmm. and you don't want to like delete your sketch or anything like that, you can just duplicate it. Uh, how long do we have before it's the two hour mark? And are you okay with two hours? I am fine with two hours. We are at 136 right now. Well, that's not bad. Then I can probably finish this whole thing. So I do a slight Gaussian blur. Yeah, I do a slight collision blur on all my halftone layers because that helps with uh, destroying any more patterns. 
when I'm shrinking it down and posting it. And I think it also just looks better and more likely to bleed. Using the eraser with that thing. with Color Lab with the subtle ink damage. Mm. So Robin has already described their love of being destructive, but if you wanted to retain the black and not worry about. Um, like, let's say you wanted to do something different or you were working on a commission and they said, I really like it, but I don't want the distressing. Then you can use a layer mask and then it applies the texture non-destructively. do as much of the ink damage on the yellow layer because it's already so light compared to the other two colors. Mm -hmm. I do some just to give it more of a natural feel. Well too if we were gonna assume that this is like a real thing the yellow is usually the least light fast so it would start fading the fastest. Oh yeah. Yeah, because in these old comics, like, it's so crazy how light that yellow is. Mm -hmm. This blue has a half tone on it to make it lighter, but this is full yellow. That's yeah. like the heaviest it goes. It's so nuts. And you have to consider that, like, the paper is yellowing, so it's even less yellow than it looks. Yeah. Yeah, it's so weird. I wonder if the yellow was even close to his light back then, or I don't know. Because I've gotten some that are really pristine, and the yellow is still really light, and the paper still yellows as well. Like, I don't think it's just a sun thing. Mm -hmm. But it's wild to me that it can create that red tone with, like, so very little yellow. Yeah. Well, I think it's more that yellow is a fugitive color, not as much as, like, a neon, um, but it starts degrading under the ultraviolet. So maybe the red it was printed on top, and it protected it a little bit. Mm, yeah. If we want to get real nerdy about color. No, I think you're right. I think that could definitely have to do with it. Just dressing the blue a little bit. I'm gonna pull these off register. Take snapping on. So when you're misregistering, do you have like a certain amount that you're going for, or like a formula, or do you just kind of wing it? I just wing it. Because sometimes it looks good, and other times it just really doesn't. Sometimes I don't move the yellow off either, but I think I will this time. Yeah, because I like what it did sticking that white line on that straw. I'm gonna do some additive stuff too with the black. Let's see. Where is that folder? I have so many freaking folders. Let's do a little overprint. Sorry, I know this probably doesn't look like much on your guys' screen. I'll get closer up. Could you explain a little bit about? why you did like that? Like, what's it supposed to mimic? Um, just during the, the printing process, it 
having problems. I don't, I don't know how it was done. It was done on metal plates, but I think when it would hit really hard, it might splat ink or it might hit a part of the plate that it wasn't meant to hit. But we have a whole a whole article on that on our website. If you haven't checked it out yet, on the website on the top right hand corner, we have a whole bunch of tutorials um, for Procreate, for Illustrator, for Photoshop, um, and just some educational ones. We've got a collection, um, which is I think the one that you were talking about, a collection of articles by Pinko Joe about the history of printing. Yeah, those ones are really good. I learned a ton from that. Trying to really mess up this black layer. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think I'm done on this thing. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. This was a fun one. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Looks great. Um, any last minute questions before we go? I'm gonna give it a little bit so that the YouTube people can catch up. While I'm waiting, I'm going to mess with the edge and fold pack. Okay, so we got one. I noticed you were using two different colors when doing the halftone textures. Why is that, and how do you know which two colors to use? That sounds... I'll let you answer, but... Oh yeah, that's just how... That's just how halftone printing would work. It's a CMYK process, so the cyan, the magenta, and the flow all work together to create these colors that we have here on the color chart. So... Like when I colored the tongue red, I did a layer of yellow and a layer of this magenta, and together they create that red over there. So when you get Color Lab, you'll get this color chart and it'll tell you exactly which combinations create which. But I've kind of got that mostly memorized at this point, so I don't really refer to this a lot, but it's, it's there if you need it. So next week when we do our webinar about Color Lab and we release all the stuff that we're going to be doing for the anniversary, there'll be a lot more in-depth explanation of how it works. Um, once you get the hang of it, it kind of, everything kind of settles and you don't have to think about it that much like Robin was saying, but it can have a little bit of a learning curve. So uh, stay tuned next week and we'll try and answer all of your questions about color lab in, in more depth yeah i i had a serious learning curve people i think think that i i just get it but i we spent like gosh like two months making color lab when we were originally doing it and just those two months of me making artwork with the pack for the pack was like there's such a difference from me starting making that artwork to the end of me making that artwork where I just like finally got it. But it's it's kind of difficult at first, but it's really fun, I think. It's a really fun process to learn. Um, yeah, definitely. For me, it was more just a matter of playing around and mixing them like you would mix paint. Um, the color chart has little recipe indicators, or I call them recipe, um, to tell you which uh, swatch was made with which of the brushes. Um, but just play around with them and, and see what you get. It might be possible to make a color that is not on the chart. If you, yeah. if you find a magical uh, transient color, let us know about it. I used to do that more. I would make colors that aren't on the chart by um, doing like a whole set of different layers and playing with the transparency of the halftones, which isn't true to how it would be done in comics, but still, I mean, we're not making comics, we're making digital art. 
so it gave me a lot more room to play with like skin tones and things like that mm -hmm. so one last question and i think then everything else um for for the people who ask questions um i'm not ignoring it but we'll have more information about it next week when we start unveiling the stuff for the color lab anniversary um so don't worry <laughs> but uh, last question that we'll end on is if you were to only get one bundle from Retro Supply, which one would be the best for a beginner? For a beginner? Oh my gosh. Um, I would... It depends on what kind of art you want to make. What kind mm -hmm. of art does this person want to make? It kind of depends on the program, too, but my personal suggestion would be that... If you're wanting to do something that's kind of comic book style, like what Robin's made tonight, then Color Lab, I think, is a pretty one-stop shop for you. Otherwise, if you're trying to go for more of like a cartoony or like Golden Books, Mary Blair type style, get the mid-century um, pack. Yeah, definitely. All right, I think we are done for the night. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming to join us and for asking questions. We'll be back again next Thursday. And we all wish you all a very wonderful rest of your night. Thanks, guys. Night. Bye, everyone.